Hello, I am Joshua P. Warren, and this is Joshua P. Warren Daily. And perhaps you've heard by now, there is a huge comet blazing toward Earth right now. And you go, oh, shit, it's getting biblical now. I mean, you know, you're trapped in your home. You can't go anywhere and do anything. You're going to have to take the mark of the beast to eat a sandwich because all the money is going to be, you know, contaminated as we move into this cashless society. And now there's a fucking comet on the way. Wormwood is going to fall from the sky and poison the water. I don't know if you've read the Bible, but the Bible has a passage about the end times and this uh, fiery star that's going to fall to earth and what you know I'm sure it will cause some devastation but then it makes the water so bitter you can't drink it oh man there's no way uh, that you can look at all these things happening right now and not just say huh, is it possible <laughs> Here, here is the um, here's the story behind this comet. It's called Atlas, and they are saying that this is the green comet of a generation. And you're going to see this thing. It's going to be quite prominent in the sky. Huge green comet, five times the size of Jupiter, and about half the size of the sun it will appear brighter than Venus from Earth by the end of April. It's currently close to Mars, but increasing in, in uh, speed as it makes its way toward the Sun, and it will make its closest approach to Earth around the end of this month, April 30th. When it gets toward the inner solar system, it will become one of the brightest objects in the night sky and potentially the, quote, comet of a generation. So the diameter of uh, Earth apparently is 7,917 miles. Jupiter's diameter is 86,881 miles. And the atmosphere around this comet is 447,387 miles. Jimmy Church was the first one to bring this to my attention. Apparently, this was discovered not too long ago, uh, just at an observatory in Hawaii last December. Okay, so what does this really mean? Is, is this something that we actually should, you know, look at symbolically? Is it just superstitious to think about um, comets? as somehow being connected as as an omen of some kind well i will tell you this it is absolutely true that throughout history more often than not a big bright comet appearing near earth has been interpreted by mystics as an omen of death uh, that is true and in fact if you look here at the story behind comets in general, the word comet derives from the old English word cometa that in turn is a Latinized version of a Greek word which means wearing long hair. So basically it means a long-haired star which of course comes from the tail. And you know essentially uh, a comet is an icy little body um, and then when it passes close to the sun it warms and begins to release gases a process called outgassing and this produces a visible atmosphere or coma which we call the tail and that effect is due to solar radiation and solar wind acting upon the nucleus of the comet so you get this big old tail showing you how it's being blasted by the sun if we go back and we look at 
Oh, let's just take a look at the Wikipedia article uh, about the history of comets. It says, from ancient sources, such as Chinese oracle bones, it is known that comets have been noticed by humans for millennia. Until the 16th century, comets were usually considered bad omens of death, death of kings or noblemen, or coming ca catastrophes, or even interpreted as attacks by heavenly beings against terrestrial inhabitants. In the 11th century, Halley's Comet is depicted portending the death of Harold and the triumph of the Normans at the Battle of Hastings. Uh, and you know what's whenever I think of Halley's Comet, it reminds me of, of course, the great American author and humorist Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens. And by the way, uh, you've heard me talk a lot about Murray the Magician, who works here on the Vegas Strip. He has a show at the Tropicana. Hopefully, hopefully he he will have a show at the Tropicana. Right now, nobody has a show in Vegas. Um, but uh, you know, Lauren and I had um, we had dinner with him and his girlfriend, and and and, and you know, I, I've I've actually uh, Danny, I've I've interviewed both of them on this program. If you go back and you look through the archives, I've I've interviewed. Murray the Magician and his girlfriend Danny who is a showgirl on this podcast um, and he told me at that dinner that uh, even though Murray is from Canada that he is supposedly related to Mark Twain and because he was Canadian he acted like he really didn't even have a sense of how big of a deal that was I mean if I was related to Mark Twain I would probably tell everybody about that all the time but uh, I guess, again, you know, as a Canadian, it wasn't as celebrated as here. But anyway, the reason I bring this up is because Mark Twain used to talk all the time about Halley's Comet. He was born in 1835, and he died in 1910. And he was born shortly after an appearance of Halley's Comet. And so he predicted all throughout his life he predicted that he would quote go out with it as well and guess what the comet returned and he died the day after so he was 74 years old when he died in 1910 one day after Halley's comet returned why would he say that and it, it, you know honestly why would you say that this this was a very intelligent guy who had a lot of insight regarding well, life, any, anytime you're a, you're a famous humorist, I mean, you have a, a very particular insight into what is really happening here in life. And because it takes a certain gift to, you know, twist things and make them funny. And, uh, you know, he was super famous, very successful, admired man. Why would he say that? Uh, it, did he have a psychic ability? Or... Um, was it, was it just mere coincidence? I don't know. So, look, I'm sorry to tell you that traditionally, in many, many cases, the appearance of a comet does herald death. But, as I explained before, death is not always a bad thing because things must die in order for new things to be born in order for a transfer that's what a transformation is things cannot stay the same and also improve it, it, it just can't happen that way things have to move and so there's no doubt about the fact we're going through a big transformation so here we are in this month of april which is the first like full month of lockdown here in the u.s and, and i'm sure in a lot of countries we had this giant supermoon. Now we have this comet, which is going to be peaking right as the month ends. And when you think about whether or not it is just stupid and silly and superstitious to look at heavenly bodies and view them as possibly symbolizing events here on Earth, um, I want you to just sort of keep this in mind. You don't have to be some kind of a, a genius scientist to realize that when you look out there 
into space with our telescopes and you see the spiral of galaxies and then you look at here on earth the spiral of hurricanes and the spiral of a whirlpool in a creek and the spiral of a seashell you see a similarity when you look out there and you see planets that are orbiting around a star like our Sun and then you look at the smallest scale and you see electrons orbiting around the nucleus of an atom you think of as above so below that's what this is all about we are looking at the same mechanics the same design the same architecture of our universe but on different scales and so it makes absolute sense that at least from that point of view that if we are all clockwork we're all cogs on some kind of a cosmic wheel here that things that are happening on the big scale would somehow relate to things that are happening on the small scale and vice versa which is why you know it's one thing to look at the stars and to consider astrological thoughts and that kind of thing and try to figure out what's going to happen here on earth but then you have people who do the, the opposite they they work on the small scale it's called claromancy where you you toss down some uh some seashells some coins some cards and you see how they fall and you say okay there's a pattern here which is representing something else happening and like you're looking at either end of it the big end or the little end it's like a, a phonograph it's a big horn it's a funnel and the big end uh, will tell you something about what's happening on the little end and vice versa as above so below um, that is often attributed to Hermes Trismegistus I've talked about Hermes Trismegistus before and they call this an aphorism as above so below in fact I wrote about this in my book use the force a Jedi's guide to the law of attraction if you have not read this book or listened to it as an audiobook it doesn't cost much to do so if you go to Amazon here's what I wrote on page 102 um, for thousands of years mystery schools around the world exploring philosophy metaphysics and mysticism have been inspired by hermetic texts attributed to a mysterious ancient figure known as Hermes Trismegistus one of the most influential phrases has been as above so below the full maxim is that which is below corresponds to that which is above and that which is above corresponds to that which is below to accomplish the miracle of the one thing why well, I have this uh, while I have this section open I may as well read to you one other thing that's in the next paragraph I've always liked this it's a quote by philosopher Alan Watts he said quote through our eyes the universe is perceiving itself through our ears the universe is listening to its harmonies we are the witnesses through which the universe becomes conscious of its glory of its magnificence end quote and that I went on to say from even the most strict skeptical scientific point of view you are at one with the universe the very mind that defines its presence the question is only how aware are you of this oneness remember that picture of the black hole that was captured recently way out in space how much how much it looks like your own eye your own pupil your own iris that's a big eye out there in space but is it so different from your own eye when you look at yourself in the mirror and you ask yourself who is looking back 
I think it is another form of the black hole, your own eye. That's where consciousness is being processed and information is flowing in and out through your eyes. Yes, the windows to the soul, fine, call it that if you want. So when we have a comet that's blazing through, we may not understand exactly why that that seems to be associated with death and transformation and has been for thousands of years. But that is mainly how it's been interpreted. And so therefore, look, I don't believe that we are up against the end of the world here. I really, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But my feeling is that um, there's no doubt about the fact we are going through a major transformation from some kind of an old way of thinking and, and living to a new way of thinking and living. And I feel deep in my bones it's going to be an improvement. Uh, this change is, it sucks because change is uh, it's something that's unpredictable and out of control. You don't know exactly what's happening, you know, when the car flips, right? We all just want this to sort of end. It's like, whatever is going to happen, can we just do it? You know, like, can we just fucking get there already? I mean, that's sort of how we're all feeling. In fact, I think we're kind of getting bored with all this shit at this point, aren't we? It's like... <laughs> I got shit to do, man. Can we can we speed up the universe a little bit and just if we're all gonna die or what? Let's just do it. Let's just get it done. But I don't think that's what's gonna happen. I think that we're gonna come out better on the other side of this. And right now, if you're feeling stressed out and worried and depressed, let this be a word of peace to you. You're very, very, very lucky because. We're all in the same boat doing this together. Can you imagine if your world was was changing this dramatically and just for your family or something like that? And then you're you're going to everybody else and you're you're saying, Look, I'm sorry I can't pay my bills right now. I'm I'm sorry that, you know, I can't leave my house right now. I'm sorry. People would say, This person's nuts. And Nobody would have any sympathy. Everybody would be all hardcore and cutthroat and backstabbing and just, you know, peep. Right now, especially though, um, even even though, though we're all in the same boat, everybody's like, a, it's a, everything's in a tender box. You can't post any kind of an opinion on social media right now without like <laughs> just some people just exploding and just latching onto it and getting all pissed off. And that's when we're all on the same boat. So, so the good news for you is whatever you're going through right now, you have a really good excuse for it. Maybe your life was already going down the shitter. And so now you can be like, yep, yeah, well, it was the coronavirus. Yep, that's what did it. It was COVID-19. So you have a very convenient excuse that you can use for anything that's been fucking up in your life recently. That's the good news. And, and also, you know, you can be grateful for, um, for the things that are going well for you. You know, I mean, like, I don't take for granted a second um, the things that are going well for you. But I know, um, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I mean, we're going through this big transformation. The comet's coming. You're trapped at home. Our, our rights are in a very blurry, wishy-washy, gray state. Uh, there's nowhere you can go. You know, you, it's not like you can get in your car and say, screw this, I'm out of here, and drive somewhere and get away from it. Nope, uh, it's, it's all happening <laughs> everywhere. So I was thinking about what we're all sort of doing right now. And I'm, you know, I am fortunate because I've been able to uh, get out of the house a little more than the average person because I still am actually working on some TV shows, believe it or not. They haven't wrapped yet. Um, but I was thinking about one of my favorite children's stories. It's called Stone Soup. Do you know that story? Stone Soup. It's actually 
an old European folk tale. And and here's the gist of it. So one day this guy, we'll call you know, the traveler, raggedy kind of dude, he just comes dragging ass into some village. And he doesn't have much more than a an old pot on his back that he keeps his scant supplies in. So he's hungry. And uh, you got to remember, old Europe, you didn't have McDonald's. So he goes up to a couple of houses and asks if anybody has any food to spare. And they all say, ah, screw off, you know, nobody's got anything for him. So he asked one person, do you have a, a nice stone, perhaps? And the person says, uh, "There's no, I don't. There's stones in the road. Uh, there, you can find a stone anywhere. And he goes, okay, thank you. So he goes over and he picks out a nice big stone. And then he goes over to the river there, or the creek, and he fills up his pot with water. And he builds a fire underneath it. And he puts that stone in there and sits there. And people start getting curious. And uh, one guy comes up and says, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm making stone soup. And the guy says, I never heard of stone soup. And the traveler says, ah, it's delicious. You, you, I'll give you some when it's done. You got to taste it. If you've never had stone soup, you know, he says, not a lot of people know how to make it, but I don't know how to make it. So the villager goes, well, okay, that sounds good. Thanks. You know, I'll hang out with you and have some of this soup. And then the traveler says, yeah, I've, I've been eating stone soup for a long time. It's a shame, though, because I wish we had some onions. Because if we had some onions, it would taste a lot better. And the guy goes, oh, well, I got some onions. Uh, I got an onion at my house. Oh, oh, do you? Yeah, well, yeah, let's throw that. So the guy goes, and they put some onions in there. And then somebody else says, man, that smells good. What are you all making? Oh, we're making stone soup. Yeah. Traveler says, oh, it'd be a lot better if we had some carrots, though. Oh, really? Well, I have a carrot, you know. So that person brings back a carrot. You see where this is going. Somebody comes along. Man, that smells good. Yeah, this is stone soup. I sure wish we had some uh, some juicy, you know, beef broth or whatever we could add to this. So anyway, all, uh, little by little, all these people in this village come together and they all add an ingredient and it just smells better and better and better and then at the end they all eat the soup and it was the best soup they ever had now why was I thinking about this well I'll tell you why yeah the traveler yeah he was he started out by tricking people a little bit you know that's the funny part of the story but what happened is he manifested a soup for himself by being smart and by being nice and by sharing, you know, like everybody who came got to come together and, 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 uh, and, and share something and, and then share the final product. And so as we all are isolated now, you, you think about, well, what kind of a, what are we missing out on here? Like, how much better might we be able to, um, to fight this situation that we're in right now if we were working together? Is it possible that this degree of isolation is actually causing more problems? Um, I don't know. I will tell you that I do believe that, you know, I've said before when it comes to something like money money comes from one place and that is other people right other people and it's the same for all resources i mean look at me right now right now i live in a condo in the desert in a man-made town i don't have access to a ranch i don't have a ranch i don't have a farm i don't have a well i don't have a creek and so if all of a sudden you know tomorrow for some reason i couldn't get water and they say you can't leave your house because you know they're they just cracked down 
uh, yesterday more on not going to the grocery store at certain times and under certain conditions and certain numbers and like they're cracking down little by little how do you boil a frog slowly you know so it doesn't jump out of the pan um i've got a good stockpile here at my house but when that stockpile is gone if i can't leave my house legally then uh i i don't have access to water if it rains, I'll put a pot outside and I'll catch it. And I have purification tablets and filters and I can do all that. But I'm in the middle of the desert here. So if I run out of water, well then I have no choice but to just wait for some other person to give me water, to bring me water. And it doesn't matter how much money you have, doesn't matter how many resources you have, if you can't access that stuff and that you know and right now you're being told you can't access it so we have to we have to depend on each other and we have to look at the value of society and why we came together in the beginning to form society and you know how every time you hear about like a, the old that's the old hermit who lives by himself in the cabin he's always crazy right uh, it's like the Ted Kaczynski type of thing that you hear about. I don't, I'm not saying that's 100% the way it goes because there is some value in having some time to yourself. And, you know, you get to brush up on some skills, maybe learn something new, read some books. You know, you get, you get around to some things perhaps that you've been wanting to do for a while. I mean, spend some more time with your family. Perhaps that's a good thing. Perhaps not. You know, when you're taking young people and forcing them to stay with old people um, who are more vulnerable. I mean, I have a friend who was outraged because he discovered that his daughter, his teenage daughter, was sneaking out of the house on a regular basis to see her boyfriend. And when she comes back, well, now she's crammed up there with grandpa. So, you know, you have to get real about the, the toll that it's taking on people right now um, to be put into this isolation. And I believe that the mental health of a person is perhaps more important than even the physical health because the mental health determines how you use uh, the physical world. So right now, I, I, I hate to say it, but there is a huge, huge mental health problem that is happening. I, I can only speak for my own country. Uh, I've always been pretty good about keeping my finger on the pulse of what's happening in this country because I talk to a lot of people all the time and I'm self-employed and I'm always I interacting with people and, and getting a vibe off of them and seeing how they, um, you know, how they respond all over the country and in different regions to different things and right now there is a big big mental health problem that is brewing and already the crime rate has been going up dramatically in certain places compared to what it was last year at this same time but you're just not uh, seeing that reported in the media because the media is infatuated with the virus, 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 virus. That's, you know, I mean, like, I, look, I'm, I'm not going to go on with this because we're all sick of it. But what I am saying to you is that if you believe that the amount of people who die from this virus, no matter how rampant it goes, like if we just say, screw it, everybody go do what? Do whatever you want to. Let's see how many people die. I believe that the amount of people that die from the virus is going to pale in comparison to the death and violence and mental illness that is going to come from indefinitely shutting down our entire society. Um, you've heard people talk about this saying, you know, is the cure worse than the disease? Um, look, you can draw your own conclusion about this, but I think 
You know, it's not about, well, are we valuing life over business? It's like, no, we're, we're, we're comparing life to life. Um, the amount of people who are going to suffer from, from shutting everything down indefinitely, what this, what, what this will do to us mentally and spiritually and, uh, you know, I, I don't even want to imagine how bad it could get, but it's it's way, way, way worse than however many people die from the virus. You know what? If we all have to get it, let's get it. Let's get the damn thing, get over with it, right? Let's get the, the, the virus. Some people will die. Well, okay, you think you're going to live forever? No. Nobody gets to live forever. I'm sorry. But it's not about quantity of life. It's about quality of life. And I know I'm pissing some people off right now by even saying this, but what I'm trying to do is to express the value of having a social society where we all, where we all come together and we contribute and we share in things and we make things better. And if, if I have to live forever in a shitty society, well, what good is that? You know, you want to be a monkey in a cage and, you know, for a hundred years, or do you want to live a good life and then, then check out and die, which is going to happen anyway. So people say, well, you know, I agree. What, well, so what do we do? What do we do? Well, I tell you, here's what you should do. Now, you know, we're all working together on this project magically. And, but here is something else that you should consider doing. Your politicians work for you and they are supposed to represent you now how do you think your politician is going to represent you if you don't tell that politician what you want him or her to do that doesn't mean that person will pay attention but why don't you give that a shot why don't you just take whatever your opinion is on this situation and write your local and state representatives okay screw the federal government just stick with your community and and uh you know again your your city your county your state write those people or call them or whatever and just say here's my opinion you're supposed to be representing me so you ought to know what what my opinion is and tell them how you feel about it because if you feel like that right now what we are going through um, is actually going to be unfair to everybody, let's say you're an older person like my parents, okay? My parents, they're high risk because, you know, they're older folks. My dad especially, he's had some heart attacks and stuff. I mean, you know, these are high risk people. And those are people who definitely need to do whatever they can to stay away from any um, any type of exposure to this virus. But once you do that, you know, once you're like, okay, I'm staying at home, washing my hands, whatever. Well, how do you like having on top of that? How do you like having on top of that the other problems that come from living in a world where all these other people are flipping the fuck out? And they're starting to lose their shit and they're starting to get pissed and they're start, I mean, and you can tell this is happening and they start going out and they start doing criminal things. Maybe it's not right for every single person out there to have to stay at home. We, we might be making this problem worse. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't give out medical advice. I'm just saying it's something to think about think about the value that we have as a society and think about what we might be missing because we're not allowing our society to have the freedom to really go out and um, and share our resources without being scared to death there's an invisible thing there there's an invisible thing but you might have it and you don't even know you have it. So you don't go anywhere. 
Because you're if you do that, you're an asshole because you might give it to somebody else because you don't know you have it. Okay, so we have this open-ended situation where there's this invisible thing and you might have it or you might not have it, but you don't know if you have it. But just in case you have it, you can't go out and do anything because you're going to infect other people even though we can't you know we don't know exactly if that's going to happen or not oh boy have we given ourselves a really really good tool for a future dictator to abuse even if you think right now this is all kosher media is telling us the truth government's telling us the truth everybody's above board why not right yeah that's real life what you see on the news isn't it i mean you go outside Nice sunny day, breeze is blowing, everything looks fine. Turn on the TV, horror show. Ah! Okay, party just wants to turn that shit off. <sighs> All right. Even if you believe that, everybody's got your best interest in mind. Think of what a tool that we're giving to some future megalomaniac who might say, Oh, guess what? The invisible thing is back. You have to do what we tell you. I don't know, folks. Am I being a paranoid conspiracy theorist? But all I can do is talk to you and ask you to think about this and say whatever your opinion is about this whole situation, if you've never tried to contact your representatives before, it wouldn't hurt it wouldn't hurt to just give it a shot right now and let's just see what happens in the meantime we will continue working on our magic all right so um indeed as i mentioned i am still working on television programs and so my um my time is very limited until all this stuff wraps uh but I have certainly enjoyed the opportunity to just take a moment and sort of decompress and talk to you through these podcasts, and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it. and And I hope that you will, above all, if you if you find some kind of value in what I'm saying, if you find some kind of reason here, if you find some kind of forum among us, the Jedi's who are trying to to help, I hope that you will share this podcast with other people and say just you know give this a listen if you you know if you're bored you know listen to this guy for a minute and just see what you think about it uh share it with people you know post it on your social media uh, email it whatever you have to do a lot of you are doing that and i can see the numbers so i thank you for doing that but we just have to keep sharing the message if you think it has some value and you think is a little different than what you might be hearing everywhere else. And since I can't post podcasts as often as I want right now, you know what? Dr. Mulder has a new podcast. And of course, you know, Dr. Mulder, he is the man who builds the world's best wishing machines. And he is my partner at wishingmachineproject.com, my business partner. And, um, His new podcast is called The Dr. Liz and Mulder Show. The Dr. Liz and Mulder Show. Now, Dr. Liz is... She is one of the most accomplished people that I've ever met. She's been a friend of Dr. Mulder's for many years and a friend of mine for a long time. I've, I've only gotten to meet her two or three times in person but man, she is just so smart. I don't want to go down like her resume because I don't have it in front of me. And, and, but let me just tell you this lady, she's smart, warm, charismatic. She knows just a lot about everything. And so Dr. Mulder and Dr. Liz have teamed up and they have the Dr. Liz and Mulder show. It's a podcast you can listen to on YouTube and They've only done three of them so far. They only have a handful of subscribers. So I posted on my Twitter, at Joshua P. Warren, a link to the Dr. Liz and Mulder show. Also, I posted it on my Facebook page. 
So if you're looking for some other interesting content, go listen to their podcast. And um, they have guests on. I know they recently had investigator Shelley Wright on. And uh, I haven't gotten a chance to listen to that one yet. But uh, they only have a handful of subscribers. So go there, hit the subscribe button, and listen to the Dr. Liz and Mulder show. And I guarantee you they're going to get into some thought-provoking stuff and having a fun, entertaining conversation. But... As far as this podcast is concerned, you know, if you go to my website, joshuapwarren.com, you can click around there and find a lot of cool stuff. Go to the curiosity shop. You'll find some things you won't find anywhere else. Watch the videos. Uh, Even if you don't want to buy anything, just go and just check out the stuff, the curiosity shop. Okay. I think you'll find it really intriguing. And while you're clicking around there on my site, click the link to this podcast. Um, Actually, also, make sure you sign up for my free e-newsletter. It takes you two seconds, and I will be able to blast you the latest cool shit that's happening. The, like, the first thing I do is sit down, write a podcast, boom, you know, hit that button. Um, you'll see all that there. But next to the e-newsletter subscription, there is a link to this podcast called Joshua P. Warren daily it's always short always free commercial free uncensored independent independent all right i do this on my own i do this right here on in my own little studio i hit the button i upload it and that's it i don't have to ask anybody for anything i mean officially everybody can kiss my ass So, you know, I'm sorry to have that attitude, but what I'm just wanting you to know is that I don't have to pass anything by some producer or some station owner or some sponsor. I don't accept sponsors. This is completely independent, pure, raw opinion and research and entertainment, really. You know, whatever you want to call it that you're getting straight from me. Click that link to Joshua P. Warren Daily. When you do that, you'll find you can subscribe through various means or just follow me on Twitter at Joshua P. Warren, at Joshua P. Warren, and I will usually tweet when a new one is available. So that is it for today. I will do my best to post another one for you soon. Uh, It'll be, again, a relief once I have all this TV stuff wrapped up. But uh, hey, listen, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your interest and support. Thank you for staying curious. And I will talk to you again soon.